Hello, everyone, and welcome. It started later the late started earlier this season in Macau and then moved to Luxembourg. And now we are here in Rome at the third stage of the Indoor Archery World Series. Today we'll be watching the gold medal finals for the barebow, the compound, and the recurve categories. My name is Crispin Duenas from Canada, along with Trueball Excel's Brandon Reyes, who are a title sponsor for this event. And uh, Brandon, we've seen this event grow from last year. It's become bigger. We've actually had to move halls, and uh, they've improved a lot of the stuff that's going on around here. Tell us, tell us a little bit more about this from an insider's perspective of what goes on into a competition like this. Well, this uh, definitely has grown into one of the biggest tournaments uh, on the series. Uh, you know, that's why it's a World Cup event. Uh, we saw as a manufacturer saw a lot, saw a lot of potential uh, in this uh, specific event. So we uh, became a title sponsor and uh, uh, it's such an easy place to get to as far as, you know, the airport's concerned. Uh, archers can fly from all over the world and uh, get here pretty easily. And, uh, uh, and I think that's why we're seeing growth and uh, we look forward to uh, you know, growing it uh, each and every year. Uh, but uh, we're off to a good start uh, in just the second year uh, here at the event. Thank you, and here we are. We've got a brand new venue as opposed to what we saw last year. There's a lot more production as you can see here, and it is looking a lot, a lot better this year. And we're about to get started. Like we said before, uh, we will be looking at the bare bow category first and we're only doing the gold medal finals. Now here's our schedule for today. We'll be starting out with the bare bows, like I said, going on to compound and then finishing up with recurve. The distance is 18 meters away and each category will be shooting at 18 meters. The bare bows will be shooting at a full 40 centimeter target face whereas the compounds and the recurves will be shooting at a three spot. And the 10 ring on a compound target is actually a lot smaller than a recurve target, and we'll look at that once it, uh, once it shows up. But Brandon, as a compound shooter, I know as a recurve shooter how hard it is to hit the 10 ring. What do you think about the small 10 ring for a compound? Yeah, it is very difficult, and uh, it adds uh, you know, a lot more. All of it is, you know, there's a lot of high t intensity and pressure, but uh, you know, when you're aiming at something the size of a nickel, uh, you know, and to get a 10 ring, you have to hit it. It, it uh, becomes very stressful for the archers, so. And here we go. We are going to be starting with our bare bow category, and let's listen to our announcer. And as you can see, these archers are holding literally a bare bow. There is no sights and no stabilizers on these bows. And not having shot this type of category, I can imagine this is extremely difficult. Yeah, uh, I, I noticed there's some weights, uh, and I think there's some specific rules concerning like uh, weights and the placement of them. But uh, other than that, yeah, it's uh, pretty instinctive. Eight. 
These archers just trying to find their sight mark on this field. It's a nine just left for Miss Bjorglund. And Miss Nozdia matches with a nine. That's an eight low. And 25 to 22 in favor of Miss Bjorglund from Sweden. And we are using the set system here. So for those of you who are joining us and watching archery potentially for the first time, what happens here is each set consists of three arrows shot against your opponent. And whoever has the higher score out of three arrows will win two set points. If you tie in score, then it is one set point each. And the first archer to reach six set points wins the match. Now, Brandon, do you see anything uh, notable there? Um, I think the archers are struggling to get their groove. Uh, I, I remember this morning, uh, we were shooting relatively closely to the, uh, the women barebow, and I remember looking over, uh, and there were some impressive groups. So I think, uh, you know, sh here shortly, they'll get their groove, and a little bit, little bit of the uh, anxiety wear off, and uh, I think this will be a good. They don't have much time. It could be over in, in two more se uh, two more ends. So uh, that's correct. And they only have 20 arrows to shoot each uh, 20 seconds to shoot each arrow. And she's doing something called string walking. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. It's a very nice ten. Well executed. That could be an eight or a nine on the line. It's too close to call. That's an amazing group so far. Hey. Holy smokes. <laughs> Very nice shooting. That puts the pressure on Lena, who has just shot a nine. And regardless of Miss Noziglia's second arrow, that could be an eight or a nine, but it doesn't really matter mathematically because even if it's as, as uh, is right now, she still wins that set and now ties 2-2. Two, two. So we mentioned that these archers are doing string walking, and it's a kind of way of sighting in their bow and using the tip of the arrow as a reference point. You'll see the archers pull the arrows straight back to right underneath their aiming eye. And they look down the arrow at the target. Instead of using a reference point on the ground, they use the target. And this makes it a lot easier to sight in in different conditions on different sides of the range. So with what, what, what string walking does is that it moves the arrow either up or down, depending on how much you string walk. And that makes the arrow hit higher or lower, depending on where you're aiming. And you also see that Miss Nozilia sets her shoulder really, really in a definite position. Check this out. It's a good shot. Now for the shoulder set. Wow. <laughs> Miss Borkland makes it look so easy. She's just so smooth. Yeah. 
Oh. Wow. <laughs> awesome shooting. I think they're getting the groove, Crispin. Uh, there's no way you can really come back from that or or fight against that when your <laughs> opponent shoots 10, 10, 10, and you already have something not a 10 lying down there. And right now it is officially confirmed that Miss Bjorglund will be leading four sets to two. And you can see some of her form in comparison to Miss Nozilia right there. And like I said, uh, the archer from Italy takes this really defined set in her front shoulder when she uh, prepares her shot. And the reason for this is that as you draw a recurve back further, you actually put more poundage behind the arrow. So all you can really do is be as consistent as humanly possible when you're setting the shot up. And I think this is what she's doing. She's yep. just, it's almost like a clicker sure. on, on a recurve bow or, or a draw stop on a compound bow, Correct. Yep. which is your specialty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Curious how much those weights weigh on the front side and the back side of both ladies' bows. Set up very similarly. Yeah. Looks like they're setting the center of gravity of the bow a little bit lower. Correct, yeah. Ten. They're doing better without sights than I do with <laughs> sights. <laughs> so close, too. Still a great group, just a little <laughs> left. <laughs> I don't know how she could shake her head at that group. <laughs> Nine here would seal it. Ten, ten, ten. ten. <laughs> wow. She says, you can do it, I can do it too. I know. <laughs> Nice. Wow. Yeah, uh, this is going to be pretty interesting the rest of the way, I think. They got their marks down. And you can see both archers. That, that, that looks almost like a face of relief. <laughs> but <laughs> both of these archers know that it said, oh, I shot a 30. You can shoot a 30. You know, let's all shoot 30s and show the world what <laughs> Barebow is really made out of. I think this, uh, this is a great show of the camaraderie that goes along with archery, even though you have a competitor who's shooting against you, uh, you don't really affect what they do and they don't affect what you do. So uh, it isn't that uncommon to go over and congratulate your opponent for shooting a really good score. Yep, yep, that's what we saw there, it was amazing. So I'm not completely familiar with the rules, Crispin. Do they have a mark on their serving or is that not allowed or how do they count? How no, they, they're not allowed a mark on their serving. Okay. Sometimes they're just going off of a reference point, and you can see uh, Miss Bjorglund is going to be shooting first here. She's going to set her fingers onto the string and then measure it and s move it down. Yep. Okay. So that's uh, they do it based off of just looking at where their fingers were touching. Gotcha. It's good height, just a little bit to the left. Four tens in a row so far. She's found her, uh, her sight mark. Wow, that was amazing shooting to close out this match by Miss Mozilia from Italy, probably a hometown favorite. And you can see that they are pretty sure of the results. The results have to be confirmed on the field of play, but as it looks right now, Miss Mozilia from Italy taking that match, our first gold medal of the day for this field of play in the bare bow. And we're just awaiting official confirmation downrange. 
And the judge has confirmed it, holding his hand over target number two. Cecilia Lazilia from Italy, gold medal, and Miss Lena Bjorglund from Sweden with the silver. Congratulations. Yes, that was some great shooting there. We saw after they got dialed in that uh, there was some amazing 30 shot and uh, with no sights and a recurve, that's quite amazing. Yeah, I, it's... It's, it's actually a testament of how popular and strong Berbo is in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's growing in the Americas as well as basically as we speak yep. uh, with really, really strong shooters making showcases at tournaments like the Lancaster Archery Classic mm -hmm. uh, where the Berbo category is growing exponentially and almost becoming, I hate to say it on your account, almost becoming more popular than the compound yes, it's very to, popular. to watch. Yeah, I'm wanting to say they were pushing 200 competitors last year. Uh, it was quite significant. So we're going to get the field reset and we're gonna get ready for the men's barebow category. And I've got some comments that uh, Archery360 has put up on here saying that in barebow, the bow just has to fit through a 12 centimeter diameter ring. So the judges will inspect the bow, and um, the bow unstrung, or even strung, they slide this ring over the bow that has a slit in it for the string to pass by, and it needs to fit inside this ring to be legal in the bare bow category. And it looks like somebody has uh, commented here that the weights are called Gilo hammers. Nice. Okay. So I guess they look like hammers, yep. and they are... Uh, they're, yeah, that's a great name. Those are the weights for the risers, and here we go with the men's barebow category being introduced on the field of play. We're going to listen to our commentators, our announcer on the field, with our barebow category for the men in the gold medal match. And here's the grid on how each of these archers got to the gold medal final. And it looks like Mr. Lundmark is getting coached by Miss Bjorglund, who just came off the field, threw yes. off her archer's cap, put on her coach's cap, and is there and probably telling him, you know, watch the wind and all that type <laughs> of stuff. She's probably saying, you better shoot good and put on a show like we did. <laughs> That is a nice. great start, great way to start off this match. Noticed a larger sized uh, diameter arrow there. Yeah, I, I believe that they'd be able to do that just because they've got the poundage behind the arrow mm -hmm. to push a fatter arrow. Wow. He's a pretty tall gentleman, so I'm sure he's got a pretty good draw length too, and that uh, Helps push that larger arrow down there too, I would say. Yeah. A little bit of a bobble right before release there, and it does look like Mr. Lundmark is probably pushing about six feet four inches. And you can see that the archer on target number one has got what looks like a Band-Aid on his nose. And some people ask, uh, what's that for? And that's actually due to where he anchors on his face. And uh, that's Mr. Lundmark from Sweden there. And Mr. Burgett, there's that black piece of tape. And basically what that's doing is not allowing the string to rub his nose raw. They, they anchor so close to their face and that string hits his nose on the way by. He just needs that little bit of protection and uh, they come in all 
different shapes and sizes and styles. I believe there was a style being sold in the U.S. that was uh, modeled after something that John Demmer had done, and he's yep. a prominent a prominent barebow bare shooter in the States. And looks like we are tied 1-1, Mr. Lundmark on Sweden, from Sweden on target two going first. Both archers seem to be a little left. Yeah, a little left, and I, I did notice that they're both using very similar veins on their arrows as well. Mm -hmm. There's no wind, so maybe it's the nerves, a little bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. nice that shot. is inside out X. Very good shot. Just left. Very good group, yeah. I agree. So I have one speculation on why these archers might be shooting left, and um, I, I'm sure there's uh, other barebow experts out there, but just based off of knowing what I know, um, the lighting actually could be having a really big effect on where these archers see their aiming point. And the reason why I say that is because they're using the point of their arrow to aim, and coming from the practice range to the main field, it's a little bit brighter on the main field, and we've got all of these lights overhead that shine onto the point of the arrow, which means that you're probably seeing the point of the arrow in a different perspective based off of how the light is hitting the arrow. That could make the arrows go more right, more left, a little bit higher, lower, because they are aiming with the point of the arrow. So they just need to in my opinion, just be a little bit more aggressive about where they're aiming and make those adjustments a little bit quicker and trust it that uh, the aiming point on this target on this field might be slightly different than what they had on the practice range. Correct. You can see the spotlight shining down right on top of them, which can change a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Nine, Ten, nice shot. Mr. Lundmark's first nine was left, and that nine was right. Mr. Burgett has a 10 left and then an eight straight low. Tied up through two arrows each. Eight low. And you can see that they've moved over a little bit more to the right. Unofficially, we're tied up. We'll get the official word here. Yeah, I'm interested to see if the lighting has the same effect on the compound archers. Because similarly, light hitting the peep sight could alter you know, the shot as well. Uh, alter what the archer sees downrange. So we'll see uh, later on what happens there. And that's when uh, your expertise are going to take over. And right now we're looking at a tied score unofficially. And we're getting confirmation from the field of play right now. And especially with Mr. Lundmark's third arrow, could be an eight or a nine. They have to make that line call. And. Officially confirmed, we are looking at a 3 3. Eight, two, eight, eight, eight. 
So that's an eight, but right now, Mr. Burgett's first arrow could be an eight or a nine, so we need to see the confirmation downrange, and we're going to await confirmation. I always, I'm a big proponent of not celebrating too early <laughs> because you never know what's going to be happening down there. It's not over until it's completely over, so yeah, we are waiting for those judges to inspect the arrows downrange. Like I mentioned, uh, it looked like that one arrow was a nine, so we'll see what happens here. And uh, for those of you who are used to this, we are watching downrange to see how the judge holds their hand over which target arrows are being pulled. The judge has not indicated just yet. They are confirming, reconfirming, and confirming again. And we have, there you go, we have our winner. It is the archer from Sweden, Mr. Lundmark, Frederick Lundmark from Sweden, with a gold medal, hand held high, and Congratulations to Mr. Lundmark from Sweden, Mr. Birgit from Norway, putting on a great show and amazing shooting from both these archers. Here's some replay of the match that we just saw, Mr. Lundmark winning in the last set and taking home the gold medal. So close, 25-25, they both split that last set, but it was all Mr. Lundmark needed was that one point. Yeah. And that is amazing. Their group stays within the six ring. And that was the bare bow category. And now we come to the compound women's gold medal final. And here, I think we're in for a great show because Sarah Preels earlier this weekend set a new world record with the compound and it only, it only stood for a few weeks because Three that weeks. was set in Luxembourg earlier. So this is a completely new world record and your world record holder is now here in the gold medal match. She's on the right and Amanda Mlinaric from Croatia shooting first. This sets up to be a great match. I believe this is number one versus number two as far as the qualifiers are concerned here at the Roma Archery Trophy. And you can tell they're both off to a great start. Looks like lighting wasn't a key or a factor in uh, changing any marks or any left to right. Both archers looking really strong and confident. Oh, that is just out. Just left. Ten points. That is on the line. It is being called as a nine star. We'll get the official word, but it's it's hard to tell. Looks like it's in from the screen, but uh, you never know, like we mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that world record was amazing. It was uh, a 597 out of 600, and that's about four hours of shooting, three and a half to four hours of shooting of that nickel size 10 ring, uh, you know, split up into two rounds, and uh, uh, Miss Priel shot a 297 the first half yeah. in an amazing. 300 the second half and uh, sets the new world record but uh, 
Yeah, three weeks, I believe, is all it lasted, and it was actually broken twice at the GT Open. Yeah. But it's the first archer to break the record that actually gets the record. So mm -hmm. uh, we can talk more about that later. I, I kind of think that's unfortunate. I think if it happens at the same event, it should count. But, uh, uh, yeah, that was uh, Ella Gibson from uh, GBR that set the record, and mm -hmm. it only lasted for three weeks. So, And Janine Meissner from Germany, who equaled that record yes. at the GT Open, but unfortunately didn't count. And uh, we thought it was kind of interesting how somebody who was ranked second had the world record because of the coin toss. Right. Yep. It all is afterthought now with uh, mm -hmm. Sarah shooting a 597. You'll notice that we're on to actual score to determine the winner here uh, in the compound division. The highest score wins, and we go five ends no matter what. So there's no sets or set points uh, like the recurve divisions or the bare bow. Looks looks like a 10 to me. Close, they're going to star it just on the right side. Ten. Nice shot. Sarah's shooting a thumb activated release, and you saw the one Amanda was shooting was more of a pressure style. So uh, that's a little different for both. Mm -hmm. So what, what are the... Uh, the differences, the benefits, the downfalls of shooting a thumb trigger versus a back tension or pressure type of release? Um, I think, uh, you know, just from personal experience, uh, a thumb activated, uh, a lot of people shoot it like a tension release. They'll, they'll lay their thumb on the trigger uh, or uh, any part of their thumb and kind of pull through the shot. Uh, you know, so they're actually not manipulating the trigger with their thumb to fire it. Um, <laughs> with a thumb activated, or with a back tension style release, that forces you to be on the spot when it fires because you never know when it's gonna go. So a lot of archers choose that route uh, and it's more of a surprise every time. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of both styles and no style is better than the other really. Uh, and it's just personal preference and, and what you shoot the best. And what you practice with the most, I guess. More than likely, yes. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of archers that, uh, you know, practice with a back tension style release and compete with a thumb activated. But uh, that's, uh, you know, becoming more and more not as popular. Um, you know, people are going to roll with what they, what they practice with all the time. And Amanda Mlinaric from Croatia is actually one of the younger of the higher finishing archers here. Okay. Having just competed in the um, Youth World Championships this past summer in Madrid. But here she is shooting with the greats of yes. the sport. Okay. Becoming a great of her own, in my opinion. I, I agree. <laughs> Sarah looks like she's got that determination she had yesterday. Mm -hmm. Still hasn't dropped any points. Correct. Ooh. That one's close. I had to open my mouth, didn't I? <laughs> Her close arrows have all been on the right side, so you know it's. So, do you think that's lighting potentially uh, on the field? I think it's probably more, uh, more aiming, more hand pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just this is for the gold medal match, so. Yeah, the so there's medal. a little bit more pressure. In, yes. In uh, in terms of in in relation to the ranking round, which is just 60 arrows shot back to back. An interesting thing about the the ranking round, uh, talking about Sarah's world record, is. Uh, 
she shot the 297 in the first half, Correct. which meant that she knew what she was going into with the second half because in speaking with her, she said, you know you're on record pace. Yes. You, you, <laughs> you can't not know. And I said, so how was the last three arrows of your your 300 score? And she said, actually, those three arrows were easy. The, the ninth end, so arrows 24 through 27, uh, sorry, 20, 24, 25 and 26 yeah. were the hardest ones because now she started really realizing that, uh, you know, the, the nerves were kicking in. But then she said after she got through those three, the last three were easy. <laughs> That's kind of surprising and funny. Yes, it is. <laughs> but it does show her mental fortitude in the fact that she could back up a 297 with a 300, know that she's on world record pace and still shoot the world yes, record. I, I find that amazing. I mean, she, like I had mentioned, she trains hard, I know, they all do. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you're wearing down, I mean, you're three hours in, you know, up to three and a half hours into a, a round, you start to shut down a little bit, but you mm -hmm. can tell she she hung in there and shot well. And we've actually had to do a target change. That's a fresh face down there. That means that they've shot so many arrows close to the middle that the lines are starting to look a little hazy. Dead center. That's an amazing shot. Inside out. Good timing, good follow through, good arrow. Noticed her bow kind of go to the side there a little bit. I think that was more of just a surprise release. Mm. Arrow's long gone, so that, that English isn't going to do much, but uh, <laughs> makes the archer feel better. And we unofficially have a tied score with one end left to go. That makes it very interesting down on the field of play. And I think just ramps up the pressure on both of these athletes. And watching Miss Munaric from Croatia shoot is very, very nice to see, just watching how smooth. Don't get me wrong, Sarah Priel's very smooth as well. And she just waits for that thing to go off and it's gone. She, and right into the 10 ring where she aimed it. So in your experience with target shooting here, we can see that the archers are using well, your, your sights from Excel. Um, but uh, the scope, it's got magnification in yep. the scope. Uh, generally, how much magnification are we talking about for a target event, an indoor target event like this, just in case people want to know what the pros are, are yeah. using? Yeah, most, uh, most of the archers are going to use probably a four, five, or six power indoors. Um, you'll see some eight powers outdoor where the distance is a little bit farther. Mm -hmm. um, the downfall of using a higher power is the amount of movement you see. So uh, a lot of these archers uh, will use four, five, and six because it's going to minimize that movement uh, and just make uh, you know allow the archer to execute as opposed to you know chasing the dot on the target. Um, some archers use a, a dot. Uh, I mm -hmm. personally use a black dot for aiming. Mm -hmm. um, I know some of the other top archers, they use a, an up pin or a, a fiber optic pin. Okay. Uh, so those are all, all certainly all good options for you know, what you're going to aim with. And talk about aiming. We come into the final three arrows of this match. Sarah Priel's with a 10. Final arrows for each archer. And the pressure's mounting. This is the gold medal match. Oh, that is looking like it's just out for right. Miss Blenaric. Right at another arrow hole, so it's hard to tell. The 10 will win it. Dead center. Whoa. It's all going to come down to an arrow call. Very, very close. Hard for us, for sure, with the, with the other hole in the target uh, to determine what it is. But uh, mm -hmm. looks a little high right to me, uh, but we'll, we'll see what the judges say. And looking down range, the judges are inspecting that arrow very closely because this does determine the winner, if there is a winner. 
and awaiting the judges confirmation and Sarah Preels is your gold medal winner. She had the world record. She goes in ranked number one, comes out of the gold medal match as number one. And congratulations to Amanda Mlinaric from Croatia, silver medal, but still one of the rising young stars uh, in the world of archery. Yeah, it was a, some amazing shooting by both archers and uh, uh, Amanda put on a great performance. Uh, I think uh, it's pretty fitting to end uh, with a gold medal for Sarah, and I think she she done well there and uh, deserves it uh, after a not early, early exit at the last event, but uh, I think she was looking forward to, to going a little bit farther. So A little uh, bit of a retribution type. Correct, thing. Yeah. yes, yes, great shooting. And coming up in just a few moments is the compound men's gold medal final featuring a veteran of this sport who we haven't seen in a while, but we'll let them get introduced on the field of play. And there you have it. Those are your athletes for this men's gold medal final. And that man on the screen, Dave Cousins, according to Archery 360, is the only archer to win a 3D, a field, indoor and outdoor target world champion. So this should be a good match. Yes, he is uh, highly decorated in archery and has been around for quite a while. Uh, and very, very successful at 42 years of age. Great start. I shot with Valerio this weekend, and uh, he was very consistent. And uh, I think he was very happy with the way he performed yesterday and today. Dave Cousins coming out looking very confident in his shot. Yes, shot was at breaking at a really good time, I think. Still a little low, which might have to, something to do with the lighting. Correct. Potentially. It, it may. Everybody else has been pretty, pretty close to dead on, but uh, we'll see here. I'm, I'm not familiar enough with uh, Valerio, but I think this is his first event uh, of this kind of magnitude, so uh, maybe a little bit of nerves there. And there could be nerves, no, like knowing that you're shooting against probably when he was younger, a guy who was uh, in those catalogs and sure. everything, and yes. uh, now he's in front of a home crowd and he's kind of the hometown favorite to bring home the gold. But unfortunately, starting with three low nines is going to be hard to come back when you're shooting against somebody like Dave Cousins. Yeah, I think uh, he's, I'm not, I know he shot a couple 150s today in his elimination matches, uh, 149. Uh, it's gonna be a, a, a pretty big hill to climb, mm -hmm. but uh, you never know, that's why we shoot the arrows. Again, it's never over until it's actually over. That's correct. And we can see that these archers have all been using uh, fat arrows. We call, we call them fat uh, to somebody who's looking in from the outside and doesn't know archery may not think that these arrows are very fat. But yep. um, a lot of compound archers, if not 100% of the compound archers here are shooting fat arrows. And yep. uh, you can probably give us a good insight into that on why, pick, why to pick the fat arrows. Yeah, maximum size uh, you know, is a 23 diameter shaft. Uh, you know, it looks like... Uh, you know, both archers are using those for sure. Uh, but yeah, it's you see that ring down there. It's it's super small, and uh, 
the archers want the uh, the largest arrow possible to hit that ring. So mm -hmm. because um, if you touch the line, you get the higher higher value higher yep. value of the score. I'm pretty sure Dave is shooting a uh, 23 15 size shaft, and uh, and that's an aluminum correct. Shaft. His is, his arrow is aluminum, and this one uh, is an Easton Super Drive 23, and that. Uh, you know, again, as a 23 diameter shaft as well. Mm -hmm. But carbon. Carbon, full carbon. Correct. And that's uh, Mr. Delestuya's Delis first 10 of the match. And Dave Cousins putting another arrow into the same hole for his second target. A little bit of a surprise there, I think. Yeah, and it looked like there was a little bit of a quiver, and uh, there was something about that shot that just didn't look very solid. Yeah, and that's generally when the shot's going to fire is when you're uh, least expecting it or when it's closest to the edge. So mm. I think that's what uh, triggered the little bit of a surprise there. And right now we've got... 58 to 56 in favor of Dave Cousins. His three-point lead now cut down to two after dropping two points in that end. And both of his nines actually looked low. Yes. So I'm yep. wondering if that's a, a trend that uh, is just common between both of these archers in, in terms of coming from the practice field to the main field. And Dave didn't look very happy with that shot as yeah, soon as it broke. It, it looked like the dot probably wasn't in the center when it fired, and mm. he was trying to trying to uh, English it in there a little bit. But mm -hmm. uh, I think it was just it was already gone, and it probably was just a little low left when it fired. And you can see how many people have stuck around to watch this finals, and it's uh, very popular here to come out and watch the best of the best do what they do. And uh, some people probably just saying, oh my gosh, Dave Cousins is back. <laughs> this, is, this is great to watch. Yeah, we talked briefly before his match uh, this mm -hmm. afternoon, and he was uh, he, he's very excited to be able to still compete at this level. Uh, where he is in his career. Just a little bit high, it looks oh, like. Okay. So we could be within one point. Uh, maybe that's the pressure's kind of flipped. And that's when you need that, uh, that girth of the arrow. Yep, correct. Let's see if missed uh, 10 points. Valerio is putting a little pressure on Dave, so we'll see, see how this end shakes out, but... Uh, Things have kind of leveled out a little bit, I believe. Nine. Another oh. nine. Nine or ten on the line. But either way, if all the arrows stay as they lie, it could be a one-point gain for Valerio. Another That's nine. definitely a nine from Dave. Unofficially, 85 to 85. And uh, in Dave's coach's box, that's uh, Peter Elzinga from the Netherlands, another prominent shooter, and uh, looked like he was looking through his binoculars saying, I, I don't know. <laughs> Dave probably yeah. asking about his first arrow to right. see if that was yes. in or not, because there it is on the line. And the judges are inspecting it downrange. We won't know until it's officially confirmed downrange as to what those arrows actually score. It's hard to tell with the holes from the previous arrows exactly. And uh, the judges will do their best to recreate the line there. Mm -hmm. Looks like we got a tie match at 85. Yeah, it is official down on the field. We are tied after three ends, each archer dropping five points. 
And since we are tied, we're going back to the original shooting order. And you can see both targets are getting replaced because of all the line calls that are having to be made downrange. And our crew, our volunteers, working tirelessly to make this event run smoothly. So hats off to the volunteers and everybody who makes this tournament possible and run. And, and uh, they do a great job. Yes, it's been... Uh been a great event and like, like you mentioned earlier we moved into a larger uh, field here indoors and uh, that was a great move as able to open it up to more vendors uh, and also uh, a larger number of archers so that's uh, a great improvement Dave needs to kind of put a plug on the bleeding here because he shot a 30 a 28 and a 27 so mm. we'll see if he can rebound and get back into the swing of things here There we go. There's a 10. That'll take a little pressure off. Make the second and third shot maybe go a little smoother. Valerio with a 10 of his own. A low 10 and then a high 10. You think the next one is going to be dead center? More than likely. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just uh, probably nerves. <laughs> Whoever the archer is that wants it the most here is going to be able to pull it together. Ten points. There we go. It doesn't really matter what uh, you know what you shot all weekend it's what's happening right here right now so mm -hmm. Valerio dropping one point in that end Dave Cousins shooting a perfect 30 and putting himself at 115 points and going into the final three arrows of this gold medal match so do you, do you think that they would be thinking about how to aim harder or execute the shot better or anything like that? Or what, what goes through a, uh, a compound shooter's mind at this point? Does it just relax more or? I think, uh, I think it's more execution than anything because, uh, you know, I've always been taught and taught people that, uh, you know, aiming could get you in trouble. You know, if you aim too hard, not mm. enough, whatever. So not thinking about that would probably be the best thing. And I think it's just run your program, uh, you know, try to, uh, you know, I've always told myself or have told myself in the past that, you know, just try to shoot like you're practicing at home or mm -hmm. uh, at the, the local club, whatever. Uh, just try to execute, uh, you know, like you would uh, what you're used to. And uh, I think aiming is just could get you uh, could get you in trouble. But uh, execution's where it's at. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> There you go. There's a 10. Nice shot. It's a good, strong comeback from Valerio. Dave knows what he has to do after seeing his arrow, so he's uh, kind of puts a little more pressure on. Dead center. And that's kind of the purpose of making the archer who is in the lead shoot la shoot last, but yep. here we go with the last arrows of this match. Opens the door for Dave. Uh, a 10 will, or a 9 will win it for him. 9 will win. There it is. 10, 10, 10. So congratulations to Dave Cousins. We see him pretty happy and probably relieved after that little hiccup that he had in the middle of this match. But uh, he came back, fought strong against uh, Mr. Valerio Delestuya from Italy.
But there you have it, your gold medalist from the USA, Dave Cousins, winning here at the Roma Trophy Archery World Series. Yeah, I think Dave, a lot of pressure off for Dave after switching to PSE uh, this off season. Uh, I believe he also switched arrows too uh, recently. So uh, there's a lot of things that changed with, uh, with Dave and uh, I think that's gonna be a big confidence booster for him going forward for the rest of the events, uh, you know, this, uh, this winter. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see what happens at the next event. But uh, for now, Dave is the gold medalist, and uh, congratulations to him. And also congratulations to Mr. Dellastuia from Italy. Looks like it was his first final in front of a crowd like this, so. And a silver medal is nothing to be, uh, you know, ashamed of at all. Yeah. There's some amazing shooting all weekend. And sometimes you can feel more pressure because you're in front of the home crowd, and yes. you just kind of want to please everybody and make everybody happy. Yep. So, um, I mean, good on him for... I, th I think they were happy that he was just there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not the usual Italian that you see shooting in the yes. final. And here we go. We're going to be going with the recurve gold medals, my specialty. Yes. And we are going to hear them be announced onto the field by the field announcer. So here we go with the recurve women's gold medal final. Back to set play because it's a recurve bow. And here we see how each of these women got here. Miss Andrioli had taken on Miss Kim Cheyun from Korea and defeated her, then defeated her teammate from Italy. And Miss Kong from Korea shooting first. dead center. You saw the hole there. Yeah. That is rare. That is very rare. Wonder if they've had a camera in that spot before on this particular target. I'm willing to bet that uh, it's just been beaten down by the compound yeah. archers. You can see that empty hole in the middle target. And this yeah, was a new face, so yeah. <laughs> that is an unmarked hole, which we can actually talk about. Yes. And we are tied at 29 unofficially. It is 1-1. One, one. And the field crew right now is going to be scrambling because I just saw one of the volunteers start running towards the practice field. Kang Chae Young's second arrow in the middle target actually passed right through the target. And it's not because she's shooting a severely high weight bow weight or anything. It's just yeah. because these targets have been used all weekend long by people who are just shooting middle. There it is pass through, <laughs> just shooting the middle of the target all the time. So yeah. it just wears down a kind of a little bit of a hole in especially, the middle of the target. Yeah, especially the compound archers that are shooting arrows that are three size the diameter of these. Yes. And as you can see, these arrows are a lot smaller than what we saw with the compound arrows. And the recurve archers generally pick a smaller diameter arrow to shoot uh, because it comes out of the bow much more efficiently than a big Arrow, and you can see the field crew there uh, is going to be changing the target. Um, actually, I should say the bail, yeah. because they don't want to have that pass through continue to happen. And um, we're going to be probably holding for just a little bit while they reset. 
But um, this is why we tell archers to mark their holes. Correct. And what that means is that each archer puts a couple pen marks on the target to mark the holes that have already been shot in the target face. For a situation like a bounce out or a pass through where an, an arrow will you know, hit the target and then disappear, the judges will look for the hole that is unmarked and that gives you your points. It's a nine high. It's actually in the same uh, general direction as her previous nine, which was high. Such a fluid shot right there. It's just like... You rarely see the Koreans uh, take their time under the clicker. It's usually just very shot, uh, very quick shots. Just up, click, gone. Whereas you see some other archers holding at full draw just for a little bit longer. The Koreans actually trust their shots so much that they can just come up and let it go. Boom. Amazing. So quick. So effortlessly, it looks like. That's their job. Yes. <laughs> Very nice shot. And that's hard to do with losing a, losing a set with a 29. Um, and one big difference that we also see with these archers is that Kang Chae Young is shooting from the top target down towards the bottom target, whereas Tatiana Andrioli is shooting the bottom target going up. Um, some people do, well, actually, I should say most people do top to bottom, mm -hmm. but there's a few select archers that includes me, who shoot from bottom to top. And uh, the reason why, well, I do it is because I don't want to see shadows on the next target that I'm going to shoot. It always, it always has a fresh aiming spot or an, a fresh target for me to aim at. So it's a, kind of a difference in, um, in how you can notice how these archers see the target and what can be, what can be drawing their eye. Yes, what can be a distraction. I used to do the same thing as well. Is there a reason why you switch from t from bottom um, to top to top to bottom? I wasn't sure if there was a rule. Actually, at Lancaster, they uh, they asked us to shoot top to bottom. Mm, okay. And instead of changing tournament to tournament, you know, I just went to the same uh, target <laughs> in the same direction every time. Shot what you practiced. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Andriol is really showing a, a, a really strong performance here against one of the top archers in the world. But Kang Chae Yun is showing why she is a top archer in the world. Yeah, and she is, I think, one of the favorites going into the Olympics mm. this year. Again, that quick shot, that's what uh, I think almost every recurve archer should aspire to, to have. Ten, ten, ten. Puts a little bit of pressure onto Kang, but I'm pretty sure she can handle it. Yes. There and it is. There's another ten. That's six straight tens for Kang. Amazing shooting. You can see that Kang Chae Young's release is really, really relaxed too. Miss Andreoli's release is also pretty relaxed, but uh, the Koreans have been known to have one of the smoothest and most relaxed releases. And when I say release, I mean the fingers coming off of the string. You don't want to force those fingers open. You don't want to have any tension going through your hand when that uh, when the arrow goes. So uh, one one way of measuring that is just seeing how much finger flick goes on with each archer. And you can see it doesn't even look like Kang's fingers even open. They just magically pass through her fingers. And that's how you know that an archer has a very relaxed release. And being relaxed is a lot more consistent than trying to force the shot. Correct. Thank <laughs> you. 
dead center 10. I watched these archers shoot earlier and I noticed on uh, Tatiana's shots that a lot of her 10s were inside out uh, that, uh, that were in the 10. She was shooting very well. Mm -hmm. And you can see that with the arrow holes. There's nothing yes. on the line, which points to two things, good tuning and good technique. Correct. Ten here, and we'll have a tie match. Oh. Door's open. Door is open. But Kang can only tie this set with a 10. Correct. And a 10. So now the score sits at 5-3, unofficially in favor of Kang Chae-young from Korea. Tatiana Andrioli needs to win this next set in order to force a tie and a shoot-off. And would be, it would be our first shoot-off of the finals day. And those are always fun to watch. Very intense, one arrow. And, uh, well, not always one arrow. But, uh, <laughs> I, I think I saw something that went to a little bit longer than one arrow earlier today. Were you there on yeah, that there side was, of the field? Uh, there was multiple uh, matches on the compound side today yeah. that uh, resulted in a tie and a shoot-off. Mm -hmm. And then uh, an additional arrow after the shoot-off arrow just because it was too close to determine a winner. I'm, uh, I'm, and they're closest to center. And I'm pretty sure I heard the third arrow shoot off happened today as well. Yep, that's uh, that's possible. I can't confirm it. I must have been moving around, but uh, <laughs> uh, it does not surprise me. Yeah, the level of accuracy has gone up in the past few years. Right now, Ms. Andrioli leading off this set, the final set. A must win situation here. Even a tie would give it to Kang Chae Young. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a race to six. That opens the door for Tatiana because if she can shoot two tens in the next two arrows, she has forced the shoot off. Let's see what happens here in the second arrow. She looked a little unhappy with that shot when it went off. Her eyes kind of widened up a bit and said, oh, no. Um, I saw all the, you know, the last two arrows that she needed to be in there went left, so mm -hmm. not sure. And that's a usual problem with recurves. If you are tense off the string, it usually goes left for right-handed archers and right for left-handed archers. Mm -hmm. Here's a 10. So. A nine here, and we'll go to a shoot off. A ten, King Jae Young will win. Nine. Oh. <laughs> wow. And I don't think we have anything close <laughs> as far as arrow calls are concerned. So we will see our first shoot off of the day. And you can hear the crowd is actually going wild because their countrywoman is now in the shoot off against arguably one of the best archers in the world for shoot off for gold. And I'm willing to bet that this crowd is going to just go crazy if yes. Tatiana shoots a really good arrow in the shoot-off. I think it's the moment they've been waiting for, so we'll see if uh, Tatiana Andrioli can, uh, can pull through here. Now with shoot-off regulation, each archer is going to get 20 seconds to shoot a single arrow at the center target. That's actually a rule. They can't just pick a target. It has to be the center face. And the arrow closest to the center will win the gold medal match. If it's too close to call, then we'll have to shoot a second arrow. But they also need to replace the targets because the judges need an exact center point called the spider or the X to measure from just in case the arrows are extremely close. This ought to be interesting. Tatiana shot a 10 on her last arrow, where Kang Che Young shot a 9. So we'll see if Kang Che Young can forget about that last shot, execute here, and uh, she will be up first.
Very wow. nice shot. Very smooth, very confident, and it's in the middle. Inside out, we'll see what uh, Tatiana can do here. It's oh, it's a 10, 10 but I think Kangs is closer. Yes, slightly farther away, I believe. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, Great I remind shooter. people that uh, if both archers shoot a 10 in indoors, it doesn't matter. It's still closest to the center, and right now, Kang Chae Yun unofficially has one. We are looking downrange to confirm the measurement from the judges, and they are actually measuring the arrow on the target with those calipers that you see there. They're going to make it very official. And all while not touching the rest of the target. And over to target number two to measure Kang's arrow. And it is official. Kang Che Young winning the gold medal. Tatiana Andrioli with the silver. Great. Great performance by both of these archers. There you have it, your gold medal winner at the Roma Archery Indoor World Series. Yeah, some excellent shooting there, and we went the full distance. Uh, <laughs> that was amazing. Everybody got, uh, got their money's worth <laughs> yes. out of this match. <laughs> <laughs> I think they wish they were able to yell a little louder uh, with the gold medal going to the Italian, but uh, King Jae Young was definitely a huge roadblock that uh, has been shooting well for mm -hmm. quite some time now. And you can't complain with shooting an inside out 10 no, in no. your shoot off. I'm pretty sure and, uh, Tatiana is very happy with the way she shot. Mm -hmm. And we are getting ready for two titans of industry coming up in just a few moments for the men's recurve gold medal match. And there you have it. Here we have the grid on how these archers got to where they are. Brady Ellison defeating Jack Williams in the semifinals and Marco defeating Gaspar Strajar from Slovenia. And it looked like by a shoot off. And here is where we see a great combination of carbon thin arrows being shot by Brady and fat aluminum arrows being shot by Marco Galeazzo. Good start for Brady. Dead center for Marco. Very good start for Marco. You can, you can hear the significant speed difference between just the arrows alone here. Just catching that line. Ten, ten, ten. All inside out. Looked like a little bit of a long hold there, Crispin. Yeah, and his follow through didn't look quite as uh, clean as his other follow throughs have been. And um, 
The one thing that uh, I can say about aluminum arrows versus the carbon arrows is that if it doesn't go well on the archer side, that means that if you don't do your follow through properly or you have a little bit of a hesitation, the aluminums have a tendency on a recurve archer to be farther out than you wanted. More, yes. more affected, yes. exactly. So that's probably one of the reasons why Brady has picked the thinner arrows is because they're a little bit more forgiving. Yeah. However, as you saw in that second shot from Galeazzo, you can catch lines, yes. especially if you're, the majority of your arrow is outside of the 10, yes. which is unfortunately how I lost against Galeazzo <laughs> in the quarterfinals. He was catching lines and I was just yeah. out. And I, and watched him, uh, I watched him shoot uh, his match against Gaspar, and it was a shoot-off match as well. So it was the big arrows definitely helped him, I believe. Mm. I've also lost a shoot-off against Galeazzo with his big arrows, where yeah. my carbon was actually the center of my arrow was closer to the center of the target, but the wall of his arrow yes. was closer. And for those of you new to this sport, uh, if, you, if you don't know, Marco Galeazzo is actually the 2004 Olympic champion from Athens. And Brady Ellison here on the screen is the bronze medalist from the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. However, Brady has been to three Olympics and Galeazzo has been to, I believe, four. So both of these men very experienced in high pressure situations and shooting in front of big crowds. <laughs> there you go. I know Brady defeated Jack in three straight sets. With actually a perfect score. Perfect score, and yeah. he's picked that up right here uh, with uh, six more tens. And I know that Brady is going to be wanting retribution for, for last year's on this, uh, last year's events on this stage at this competition because, uh, well, he knows that it takes perfect scores to win. Correct. And he's definitely taken all the steps to make sure that he is ready and shooting perfect scores. And so far he's got 60 out of 60, but scores don't really matter in recurve at this stage because you just need to win the set. But he, I know, will be looking for a perfect yes. round. Yep. Those tens. <laughs> Wants all the tens. Yes. <laughs> What kind of uh, bow weight do you think, Crispin, that uh, most of these guys are, are shooting as far as uh, the recurves are concerned here? I believe Brady is shooting somewhere in the order between 45 to 50 pounds, and I would uh, probably estimate maybe about 45 to 50 for Galeazzo as well. It's, it's very variable depending on the archer and what they can uh, handle and make work. Um, by that I mean like you don't lose finesse in your shot. You don't, you're not just trying to, to, uh, to muscle it through. Uh, a little bit of a shake from Brady mm -hmm. and that cost him on that arrow. <laughs> Galeazzo fighting back strong, taking advantage of Brady's nine. He will win this set. We'll be all tied up. A little bit low on that shot. A little low left. Mm -hmm. So sometimes with, uh, with recurve archers, uh, feeling a little bit of pressure can make your shoulders come up just a bit. And if your shoulders come up, 
your draw length shortens and you don't get through the clicker in the timing that you want. So when we eventually see Brady's second shot, it was just a little bit of a hiccup. I know he's, he's going to come back and fight strong after this, but here you can see that little bit of a quiver in the face right before the arrow goes, and that's usually just caused from tension and holding for just a little bit longer than you really would like to. All square at three set points each. Hmm. Three straight nines from Brady. It's a nine. Galeazzo keeping it strong. And you can see Brady's eyes don't shift when he gets into anchor. It means he's not looking at his clicker, but if you watch Galeazzo's eyes, when he comes into full draw, he looks down and then back up. So that is actually looking at your clicker. Why would you do that? Well, he just caught that line. Yeah, that's close. So that's a... That's actually a little bit of a, a tipping point for some archers, being able to shoot while looking at your clicker versus not looking at your clicker. We know that the shot wants to go off kind of in uh, a surprising type fashion, and that's why a lot of recurve archers don't look at their clicker. But um, you can see that Brady's not looking at his clicker, where Marco is uh, basically controlling his shot by knowing exactly where in the shot cycle his point comes through the clicker and he'll look back up to his sight pin when he sees the clicker come down the point and rest right on the exact edge or the, the, gotcha. the tip of the point. So it's basically one of the ways just to make sure that the shot goes off with the same timing. Okay. But uh, most recurve archers train and train a lot just so that we, we can get the shot timing down uh, by feel. We don't want to look at the clicker, but uh, I guess I'm guessing that Marco Galeazzo has probably shot this way for years. Sure. Yeah. And I know that uh, there are stints where Brady does the same thing, but it looks like here he is just keeping his eyes focused on the target. Nine, just low. Marco just needs to tie him. He just needs to shoot exactly the same arrows as Brady to win this match. Ten points. was not happy with that when it went off. I think it might have been sitting low because you see you saw and the, the follow-through yeah. push up. Hey, he still has to shoot a 10 here to win. It's the race to six. We'll see if he can do it. Little quiver. And he did it. Oh, a 10. And the crowd goes wild. Marco Galeazzo winning here in his home country of Italy against Brady Ellison. And what a finale, huh? <laughs> that is a great finale. That was a great way to end off this competition with the last match. Their countryman, Marco Galeazzo, winning against Brady Ellison, your gold medal winner. And congratulations to Brady Ellison, silver medal at the Roma Indoor World Archery Series. Some great shooting by both archers. 
I think they both feel like they could have probably done a little better and want that perfect 15 arrows or nine arrows, whatever they take. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think uh, some overall great shooting. And I think the, the Italians are really happy now that they uh, they got a gold medal here at their uh, home country mm -hmm. uh, with one of their archers. Galeazzo is a very strong archer. He fights back. His form might not be very conventional, but it doesn't say on the scorecard that you shot this score with perfect form Correct. or with bad form. It's however you put those arrows down range. Yep. So there's a look at your champion, Marco Galeazzo, and that last 10. <laughs> right to the interview with local media, and I bet he's happy, and uh, they're all pretty happy for him, and you can see how enthusiastic that reporter is with him. But congratulations again to Marco Galeazzo. And that does it for all of the competition here on the field of play. And we will be going with the award ceremonies in just a few moments that include all the categories. That's barebo, that's junior, that's senior. It's compound, it's recurve. Longbow. Longbow as well, which uh, some of our viewers didn't see here, but uh, there's a lot of awards to be handed out, so Please stick around and uh, watch these archers get the hardware they worked so hard with some long days to achieve here on the Roma Archery 2019 World Indoor Archery Circuit. <laughs>